blog. Firstly, if you do hear some noise in the background, it's my washing machine. I've got my washing machine going. Um, I love my washing machine. It has to be said, uh, living in a place um, that didn't have a washing machine um, before for, for a long time and having to walk, you know, the best part of a mile uh, to do uh, washes, um, you know, used to take up a sizable chunk uh, of each weekend and now it's really easy I just put it in and switch it on uh, but that I, I digress so uh, this week's video blog yes um, it has been a very good week I have spoken to you uh, over the last couple of weeks about some of the changes that I was making and I am pleased to tell you that, the, that I'm progressing very very well indeed um, I'm feeling much happier uh, much better um, and if things progress like this, um, you know, by the autumn, we'll be, uh, we'll be quids in money-wise, uh, we'll be a lot healthier um, and a lot happier. Uh, so, let's just hope that things uh, progress as they are. Um, my uh, recap video is up. I do apologise for it being a little bit late. I struggle uh, when the UFC decide to do midweek cards. Um, I can, I, my usual, uh, uh, what I intend to do is to do a predictions um, event uh, the week before. So I've got about a seven day period uh, for people to watch it. And then I like to get my uh, recap video up sort of within a day or two of the event. That's, that's the general gist when it's on a weekend. When it's midweek, you know, it gets really impossible for me. I, I end up having to upload the predictions video the weekend before, so I only have three or four days uh, before the event. And I can't really do a proper um, recap video until uh, the weekend, and part of the weekend after, so that's again three or four days after. Part of that is because on an evening I just don't have time. Uh, if it's not a weekend, to watch the uh, event. And I can't really speak about it before I've watched it, can I? Um, and uh, so so there we are. I do apologise for that. The predictions event uh, for next week is uh, up as well. Uh, so go and enjoy both of those. Um, do you know, the weather in the latter half of this week has been absolutely glorious. Um, so it's with irony that I tell you, uh, for the first time in 150 year uh, history, the Great Yorkshire Show was cancelled. In fact, worse than that, it wasn't even cancelled prior to the show. Um, they did the first, first day, and they cancelled it at the end of the first day. Firstly, um, what's the point? Uh, because it's only a three day event anyway. It seems a little harsh to you know, do the first day and then not. You either you either cancel it before or you don't cancel it at all. It, it just seems absolutely foolish what they've done. Secondly, this whole problem has come about not due to the rain, but due to the fact that the Great Yorkshire Show does not have a car park. In fact, the Yorkshire Show ground um, doesn't have a proper car park and, and therein lies the problem. When you're parking uh, hundreds and hundreds of cars on fields that are waterlogged and muddy and you need tractors to pull the vehicles out. That was the problem, okay? And I understand that that was a problem, but God, how difficult is it to put to, to put down a, uh, a concrete, you know, uh, place for people to park? And here's the real, real ironic bit, because people have said to me, oh no, they need those, um, those fields because that's where they, you know, 
put for grazing some of the animals that they have. Fair enough. Park and ride scheme. Has nobody ever thought of that in 150 years? Perhaps they should do a park and ride scheme. There are plenty of places in, uh, in Harrogate and Nesborough that they could commandeer uh, for those three days um, to do a park and ride scheme and it might in fact make uh, it might make the um, the congestion around that area a lot better. For example, uh, there's a, an industrial state on Knaresborough, which is perfect for a park and ride scheme. Uh, there are lots of um, supermarkets on the outskirts who uh, could get quids in if they offered their car parks uh, for those three days as well. Um, and there's Killinghall Moor. Uh, that has a, a, a reasonably sized um, uh, car park up there. You know, there are places, there, there are things they could do, um, or they could do a combination of both. So I feel that they've let themselves down there. And it's unfortunate because a lot of small businesses, local businesses, take part, and uh, some estimate they have lost about £20,000 uh, through doing this. And that could be a sizable chunk of their... Um, uh, their their yearly takings, I suppose, and you have to remember uh, that for some of them it, it's frightfully important. It's it's a really big part of their annual takings. Um, so I do feel that the organisers themselves have let it down. And to be fair, um, it's been very very nice, warm um, since, dry more or less since. So it's a little bit ironic. It is a little bit ironic, but there we are. Um, so, the only other thing that I wanted to say for this week uh, was that my parents have been away, so uh, my father had his birthday um, away. I haven't seen him yet, uh, so I'm looking forward to giving him uh, his gift uh, today. Um, and uh, I have, the contingent have finally matured, and I know what I've got. It's definitely three males uh, and one female. I am naming the female Beverly. Now, uh, this is after a person at work called Bev, and the reason I'm not naming it Bev is because I've already had a bird called Bev. It's, it's quite history, actually, because Bev at work was the person who said, suggested to me that I uh, try breeding my zebra finches. Um, I had two males at the time, and I got two females, uh, one of which I called Bev. Unfortunately, Bev turned out to be a male, and since we were getting uh, uh, the, the women purely for breeding, uh, I had to give Bev back, so Bev lasted about a week and a half. Um, so now I have another female uh, um, zebra finch, I thought I would call it after her as well, but I would call it Beverly so that I don't get confused between her and the previous one. <laughs> so there we are. Um, the males, I am naming one uh, Martin uh, after a long, long uh, running friend of mine from university, and then I'm naming two uh, after mixed martial artists, of course. Uh, one is going to be called Lamas. He's the youngest. He, in fact, isn't still uh, fully developed yet. His patches are still a bit sort of, they're not, they haven't completely come through yet. Just shows how young those poor little birds were when they were sold. Um, uh, and the other one is going to be called Eric. Um, so I've, uh, two, two, two more people, two more mixed martial artists have, have got namesakes now. And that is uh, my blog for this week, I think.